So I've been gone for almost four months in California. I'm back in Illinois and let's see how my battery maintenance system is going. So in the last Solar Sunday, I had this solar panel just in the kind of shady area, just providing a little bit of power to keep these batteries up to 13 volts or so. The battery voltage is at 13.4 volts. The panel is at 15 volts. It's giving 0.1 of an amp. And it's given 9.2 kilowatt hours of energy. That's pretty cool. Now, if I had been using energy from these batteries, then it would give it a lot more power. But this is just using 9.5 kilowatt hours over the past several months to keep these batteries up to full. And unfortunately, I do notice that there is a lot of liquid around them. That means that they've been slightly overcharging. Not, in a ba not like to a bad point. But there have been bubbling some of the liquid out of the ones that are filled up more. So we're going to have to check all of the cells and make sure they're filled up with water. Just regular tap water because I'm not going to waste money on distilled water for these batteries that came off the recycling skid. <laughs> but let's get these out. Okay, so there was actually a worry in my mind ever since I first moved out to California and I was like, oh, did, I wonder if these actually are staying alive or not. Because, see, I was worried that maybe these little alligator clips weren't connecting on all of the batteries because each one of these has to be connected. Otherwise, it, just, it would let one battery die if one of the connectors was dead. Or if any ones were in a chain down the line, all those ones would, would die because this wasn't a very good setup. This is just a bunch of, this is a very impromptu thing. But it worked out really nicely. Pretty much all of these batteries are above 13.1 volts. And of course they still have a little residual charge from just coming off the solar panel, but man, that's, that's a good voltage. I think that might be a little bit high voltage, but oh well, I hope I didn't roast them. Let's pop these caps off and see if they need any water. All the cells are pretty much full still. That's really nice. Some are even too full. I did air them up, or I mean, I just watered them up right before I put them in that container though, so that's kind of to be expected. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have an exact cap to take off. It's not really a serviceable one. Maybe I could pop this off though, let's see. It's not meant to come off. Now I almost forgot about the batteries underneath here. I have my newest deep cycle battery that I bought when I hit a thousand subscribers in, underneath here. And I've been having it being charged by this 100 milliamp solar panel for a while. So I hope it went okay. Let's go check. Oh yes, look at that. 13.5 volts. That's with this on, so we can remove this. The voltage should drop, but it's going pretty slowly, so that means it's actually a very good battery. Because this is pretty much brand new. I've, just ha I've kept it pretty much at 100% since the beginning of 2014. You know, a part of me wants to like keep that one up to top shape, so like just to see how long it'll last if it's, full, if it's kept at full charge. I bet it'll last pretty long, maybe several decades if I just keep it fully charged and healthy. So this crappy battery, which I used to use to power my electric lawn tractor, is at 11.2 volts because I haven't charged it. Let's hook that up to the little solar panel. See if that helps at all. Cool. Now, if that was a good battery, I would link it up with that one and charge them both in parallel because that little solar panel could probably handle it. The problem is though that battery would waste all the energy and it would keep that one down at a lower voltage and that one would probably die sooner. Plus, that thing's just not really that worth to save. I may just give it up for the core charge because it really doesn't give much power. Oh, which reminds me, there's a few, few more batteries that I 
kind of forgot to charge. Hmm, should be a couple in here. Yep, there they are. Those little Exide motorcycle batteries. Oh, it looks like a bunch of ants took over my workbench while I was gone. Oh, they're angry now. <laughs> I think they're flying ants, don't know. Okay, so this battery is at 12.2 volts and that's at 11.07 volts. That other little black battery that I hooked up to the little solar panel is already back up to 11.7 volts. So, you know what? What I may do is I may, instead of just, because I mean, part of me wants to just like kind of ditch them and let them go. Because they're, I've kind of fucked them up and they're not really that good. But I think what I might do is I might just string them together with really thin wire and have that little solar panel charging them just off somewhere, probably in the shed or something like that. But then I'll take this battery and I'll put it in with these being charged by the big solar panel. I think that would be a good, a good idea. Now, just to get these batteries charged, let's take them and charge them with the big solar panel and be charging it at, oh, I know, 5 watts or so, because that's not in, a, in direct sunlight. Okay, so the solar panel is bringing it up to 12.04 volts. Let's see how much power we're getting. Oh, and the sun just came out a little bit. Panel's at 13.8 volts. Giving 0.4 of an amp. Battery's at 12 volts. I've tilted the solar panel up. Now the battery is at, oh, 12.2 volts. That's worked really nicely. It's giving uh, batteries at 12.1 on here, 13.7 on the panel, giving 0.6 of a volt, or 0.6 of an amp, I mean. And I probably need to clean this panel because that has a lot of gunk on it. Here I filled this thing up with water so I could refill my batteries, but it turns out the cells didn't need any water, so, oh well. That's significantly cleaner. Or at least I took a lot of junk off. Twelve point two six volts. Let's see what the amps are. Uh, down to point two of an amp, but oh well. It's been about a day and a half, and the batteries aren't doing bad at all. They're definitely not new. But oh well. The lowest ones are about 12.5 volts. The highest ones are like these ones, which are pretty much still brand new. That are doing pretty good. Like 12.94. Can't beat that. Now these ones, I just took them off the charger. They've been charging for about a day or so. Or about a day and a half. And they're doing pretty good also. Before I put all my batteries back in here, I'm going to slightly upgrade the system. I'm going to add these two wires, which will act like little bus bars. Basically, I will nail them, I think right here. So one will be positive, and one will be negative. So instead of having to have these jumpers from the solar panel going into one battery, then other jumpers going to other ones, and kind of like linking together, daisy chaining them all, where if the first connector didn't connect, then all the other ones wouldn't get power. But this one, they would each battery would be connecting to this like bus bar type or whatever type thing. So I'm just gonna nail that up and see how that does. Okay, so here we go. I have the battery already set up. We have these two bars. One is positive as you can see and one is negative. I thought I had some red duct tape because I would have put red duct tape over here and then silver duct tape or black if I had it over here to denote the different colors or the different polarities, but whatever. I think having two of these and two of these is good enough because I can just look at it and see. And so yeah, now everything is just going to be connecting, instead of connecting in series, or, or not series, connecting from one battery to the next, it'll, it'll all the batteries will be connecting to this, which will then be connected to this. I'm going to be putting the smallest connectors on the batteries that I care about the least. Because in case like these battery, uh, these connectors 
or too rusty or whatever. I don't care if that battery dies. I'd rather have that battery die than a bigger deep cycle battery that has some usable lifespan. That one's kind of, it's nearing the end of its life. Well, I almost had this done yesterday, but I had to wait a whole day because I had to get these some more of these jumper cables. I didn't have enough, surprisingly, which is weird, but oh well. So I ran to Walmart and I just got some of these. They were $2 a pack, so $1 per jumper. That's probably fine. So now I have all eight batteries connected up and I'm pretty happy with that. Batteries at 13.2 volts, panels at 15.2, and it's giving 0.5 of an amp. Oh, I feel some rain. We got some rain coming in. It's so weird when you have sunlight, like direct sunlight and rain. But anyway, I guess we better hurry up with this. So, now the big question is, is this meter detecting only one of the batteries, or are all of these connections working? One way to find out is to measure the terminals on the batteries. You do not want to measure the actual connector because we're wanting to measure it after the connector. 13.2, all right. Because the battery itself wouldn't stay at 13.2 by itself. Oh, looks like all these batteries are connected up fine. And if there's, a, if there's ever any battery that's not connected up right, just jiggle the wire a little bit to clear off some rust. Looks like it's all good. I would say I feel pretty good about how all these batteries survived the months that I was, I was gone. And I'm pretty happy with the small upgrade I've done to clean up wiring a little bit. But now, it's just time to wait and see if it lasts another couple months. And then maybe someday in the future I'll do something interesting with these. But for now, they're just kind of in like a maintenance state, just to keep them for someday later when I want them. I may start burning power from them, who knows, because there's a small amount of power coming from that. But now, before the rain comes, let's not forget that we also have these three batteries. That's what I bought the extra jumper cables for. We have the small solar panel coming down here to all the batteries on a tray. Let's check the initial voltage of the first battery. 12.24 volts. Connect up to the solar panel and see that, how that affects it. Well, it's definitely going up, but not by much. I didn't expect it to go up by much, though. This next battery is 12.36. Now, let's connect that one up. Hmm. Oh, this battery's lower, so it's dragging it down. But either way, that doesn't mean there is a connection there, so that's good. And this battery's at 12.41 volts. 12.42, I mean, wow. Connect up this. And it gets pulled down to 12.35. So there is an effect on that. And that little solar panel will help bring up the voltages, hopefully. Although I may ditch that one if these ones are getting them much better and that one's dra dragging them down. And why I put this on a tray is because I can just do this. And keep them out of the rain. Well guys, that's it for this solar Sunday. The rain's already coming, it's sprinkling a little bit, but I kinda like it like that. I know I'm kinda stagnating with my projects in solar power, but to be honest, I think it's more interesting to see how they last in like a long-term setup than how they then just like tinkering around with it. So it's pretty interesting in my opinion. Well, I should come back around December or so, and so I should have another Solar Sunday video around then. Happy Solar Sunday to you, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!